Heavenly Father, we do humbly ask in the mighty name of Jesus uh, for the spirit of truth to teach us. The more so your your words, your truth, and your understanding. We'll give you glory for all things. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Shalom, shalom. Um, last Shabbat message. Um, looks like it's touched a lot of people all across this country. Uh, which is a good thing. That's what it was intended uh, to do. Um, I'm learning since a lot of people have gotten so far away um, from the Most High. Of course, you know, you can't really say that people are really too close to him. Um, I think a lot of things that people need to understand is that and you've heard me say it before, again and again. Then when you become an Israelite, uh, no religion on earth had nothing to do with that. As a personal experience between you and the Messiah. Are you following me? Um, yet you had to be told about this Messiah that you thought you knew. That's just the way he has it laid out and planned. The only way people are going to hear um, about the faith that lies in us is they have to hear it coming from us. Uh, because we're Israelites. And if you hear of any other way, you can see the reason why people's lives um, won't improve. The Messiah clearly told us um, that in this walk and in this way, it would also come with, with much persecutions. Have y'all read that? He said that um, people will uh, speak evil against you. Have you read that? Um, he said they will cast your name out. Um, Using modern day terms, they will ostracize you from their company. Uh, and then when all these things happen to us, uh, we're kind of puzzled a little bit. But if you read the book, it should be no surprise. He said, uh, man's own foes are going to be they in your own house. Um, so, and then he goes on to say, you know what? You are happy if you know these things. And then he says, you know what the real woe is? When men speak well of you. Now, how do you fit all that together in this society that we've grown up in where everybody is busy trying to be accepted and caring about what everybody else says and thinks? You know how I many people out there live their lives um, just to try to satisfy people they don't know? Some people say, well, I don't really care what nobody thinks. Let, well, let about 15 or 20 people start talking about you, and then we'll see where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we find out how much we've actually have fit into our environment. Um, it's after you get a little bit of knowledge in you and you, you find out that when he's called you and he's chosen you uh, to be a disciple of Christ. And as you begin to learn more about him, then you, you notice that the opinions of man start to diminish. Matter of fact, they get way off in the background. And then you really truly uh, can say, I don't care what nobody says or thinks. I mean, after all, you know who you believe in. They don't. They don't even have him. Because if they had him, then they would understand what you understand. So since they don't, you've been in that position of opposition before where you understand that mindset. They don't understand this. So we do. Um, but we've had a lot of people 
receive the Holy Spirit. Now, it's a joy, you know, receiving the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it really is. It really truly is because um, you thought your life was hell before. Now wait. You thought people rejected you before. Now wait. Hallelujah. The one thing I've learned about this life, the closer you get to Jesus, the more enemies you make in this world. Is that right, Israel? The more you drive for holiness, the more people will despise you. You would think it would be the other way around. You know what I mean? I've thought we're producing a sect if I can use that word and be pure. We're producing a sect of people that won't, won't even give the secular governments any problems. Wouldn't, that, wouldn't the government w welcome that? He said, <laughs> should, should, should. <laughs> you would think that even if you, or you know some people that are in a pagan religion, they would welcome that. But it's true what the Messiah said. Light has come into the world. Y'all remember the darkness that we all used to walk in? The chaotic ignorance. We used to walk in. Hmm? He says, men love that. Why do you think men sin? Because they love darkness. Anybody in here besides me know that sin causes a lot of pain? I mean, a lot of pain. Oh, yes. You know what the Bible also says? He said that people will get to the point that oppression wouldn't even matter to them. They just kind of like turn their cheek and go on some more. Hmm? But for the wise man, It'll make him mad. Yep. That's right. So there's a whole total shift, but it only happens when the Ruah comes in. That's right. The spirit that is holy. Now the Holy Spirit must continually to be increased in you in order to gain more control and more access to you. You know, he's a... Uh, uh, again, the Most High, even after being converted, he doesn't make us serve him. He don't. You can have as much or as little of Yah as you want. And I'm inclined to believe, since being a student of this word right here, uh, that you need all you can get. And that there will never be a time, matter of fact, there's not enough years allotted to us in his life that we could ever learn all that we need to know. But since this is the only time we're going to pass through this way, and many have gone on before us, and people are going to be coming after us, this is our time. We better get it right. Because we're, we're not going to go past this way again. Brother Ed, you'll never be 19 again. You'll never see 19 again. You're not going to pass that way again. I say that because, see, after being converted, there's many years that we all regret. Many things we've done in those years we all regret. And you know what? We're never going to pass that way again. It sure is nice to know, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we have years that we can look forward to because we're looking to advance in the kingdom. We're looking to be more holy, more righteous. Isn't that beautiful? We um, have been having a lot of people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you just by personal experience, usually women receive the Holy Spirit a whole lot easier than men do. Men, first of all, they're prideful, arrogant, so-called tough. 
they have a lot of intellectual pride. And they don't ever want anybody to see them in a position of humility because to them that equates, you know, that to them, the definition of that is weakness. So when you put all that together, men usually have a hard time of humility. That's not to say that we all can't overcome it because, I mean, I received the Holy Spirit years ago. So no doubt, I, I believe me, I know what it means to be humbled. Now tonight we are going to open up your Bibles. Turn to Matthew, the 18th chapter, verse 3, okay? We're going we're gonna to show you something, what the book says. Well, we'll start at verse 1, okay? Um, we'll go, what I'm trying to do um, as the Holy Spirit is my helper, I'm trying my best um, as much as he allows to me to and give me utterance to reach those that are his. Um, I feed you sheep. He never commanded me in the word to feed goats. That's true. True. He told Kepler, if you love me, then feed my sheep. I feed sheep. Sheep, um, uh, uh, in the analogy of the book, you know, it's really, truly, uh, I guess not a good thing to be called a sheep, but I would rather be called a sheep than a goat. Um, but the implication, according to scripture, is, is that sheep are obedient and goats are disobedient. Is that all right? Um, so I'd much rather uh, be in a category of a sheep than a goat. And since I'm a pastor, I, I'm charged to feed sheep and not goats. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, verse 1. Come on, Brother Shane. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? See what the concern is? Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Wouldn't it be nice if we had even just a resemblance of that question like Ed proposed today? And what I'm saying is, you see the ambition and the drive in the men? You know, who's the greatest in the kingdom? I mean, these people were vying for first place. We're not vying for no place. Uh, I'm not saying that they're right in their application. We're just going to see what the Messiah had to say. But they did have a different spirit than what we function after today. They had a different desire. Am I making sense? They had a desire. Let's read. And Jesus called unto him a, a little child. He called unto them. Uh, now, these are men doing the talking here okay and then Jesus called to them a little child and set him in the midst of them and said verily I say unto you mm -hmm. except ye be converted except you be what converted first order of business yeah. he's already done called a little child and he's a grown man that are asking the Messiah the question so he's called a little child set them in the midst and his first words, it says, except you be converted. And then look what he says. And become as little children. So Jesus often used examples too then, didn't he? And, and why you think that he put that little child up in front of her? Because he wanted to give them a visual of what you need to be like. Of course, they didn't pull a Nicodemus. They understood what he said. You know, you know they, they knew good and well that they could not go back to childhood state. Huh? Let's read on, see what he's talking about. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, the reason why today that people can't be converted is because they're too grown in their mind. That's true. They That's know too true. much in their mind. That's true. Let's go back to a time, if you can go back to as, as, as small as you could remember yourself. You, do you remember how limited in knowledge you were? Do you remember how limited in understanding you were? Yeah. Hmm? Do you remember that? You didn't know enough. See, it's only when you know a lot that get you in trouble. Yeah, true. I mean, you don't believe me? Look at your miserable, wretched life before Christ. When you was a child, you was all right. It wasn't until you gained knowledge of self. You find out you ain't who you think you are. Matter of fact, you are a mess. Isn't that true? The Messiah sure is intelligent, isn't he? Huh? 
I'm glad he let us in on a little bit of it. Huh? Now look what he's look at this then. Then he says, look at this. Verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself. Hey, isn't that not the difficulty today? You ever seen somebody that, that won't repent? What are they holding on to? Haven't you been that place before? You ain't hold on nothing but death, misery, hell. You know the reason why we hold on to it? Because we're familiar with it. Uh-oh. That's why man has a hard time humbling himself. Man, woman, generic form makes no difference. I can speak from this perspective because I've been on the other side. I know what life was before Christ. How about you? Do you remember? Do you remember? And of course now on this side, one of the most difficult things to understand is how in the world can people keep holding on to something like that? Because see, we're on, we come from another perspective now. Huh? So he says, whosoever therefore shall humble himself, look, that's free will. That's not be humbled. That's humble yourself. See, if you have to be humbled, then you're not doing what the Most High would require of you. Because he says, whosoever will. He wants of your free will. Are you following me? So humbling yourself and being humble is two total different things. Huh? Read on. As this little child. What is he? The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And in order to be effective in the kingdom, and you know the kingdom is within you, right? That's right. All right? You must humble yourself and be as a little child. That means in your understanding, how you perceive and understand. You have to have a teachable spirit. You have to be willing to be instructed. Take the nature of a child. They don't know everything. But you know that a, a child trusts unconditionally in their parents? Yes, they do. It ain't until they get a little bit older they start to doubt. Oh, yeah. Anybody ever been a child before? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you trust your parents unconditionally as a child. No matter what they say, nobody, you, you trust them. But when they get, when they, when, you know, child start getting older, especially those teenage years. That's when they become the, the, the greatest intellectual since Socrates. Hmm? All of a sudden, the one they used to trust in, they don't trust them no more. So what, what is the order of things? seems like, well, I got to go out in my life, got to be a wreck, a total misery, be turned upside down. I have to be shamed. I have to be humiliated. I have to be defiled. I have, I have to go through all this embarrassment. And it still is not enough to make you as one of those little childs that Christ set you in the midst of. You know the reason why? Because all that does not bring you to humility. In the kingdom, you must be willing to be humble, not being humble. See, sin, it, it gives a false sense of humility. Isn't that right? But see, in this kingdom, you have to be humble. You have to, I mean, you have to be willing, willing to humble yourself. That means you have to trust. A child trusts unconditionally in their parents. That's what we have to do if we're going to be great in the kingdom. So the Messiah is trying to teach the disciples in simple terms what it's going to take for you to be great. And the first step is humility. You know, humility is not taught too much in this society. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's how we're going to get it because, you know, in order to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to humble yourself. That means everything you thought, think you are, think you were in this life, believe it or not, y'all don't really care. If you want to ask him his personal opinion, he don't care who you think you are or think you were. But he does want you to meet his conditions. 
And to meet his conditions means that you got some steps that are necessary that need to be taken. Hallelujah. And hey, don't stop taking them. Keep on taking them. So, Jesus had made a promise. Let's go over here to John. The uh, uh, 14th chapter. Now I'm centering on, um, before I hit here, I'm centering on the word talk. Are y'all listening? I'm centering on the word talk. Because I have a few things I need to cover here in this short study to try to give people understanding. All right? Um, When you were a little baby, you did not know how to form words because they were not in your memory. As an adult, you now have learned how to form words, but unless they're in the memory, you cannot perfect them. You know, we can get in here and somebody can speak a foreign language and we can, they say, repeat after me. And we can repeat after them. But that does not mean that we have the understanding of what they are saying. But why? Because the words have to be in the memory. And so it's like all of a sudden one day you start seeing the little children as they begin to progress, grow up and stuff. All of a sudden they form a word. And first, the first ones used always da da. Pretty easy to form. Or mama. And as they get old, next thing you know, you, you start seeing them putting sentences together. And all that is because of the environment they've been raised in. Isn't that right? Hmm? Everything in the kingdom is always associated with being a child. Because notice, he used the, 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 the phrase, you must be born again. That's what we have in our English translation, so we'll stick with that because we understand that, okay? You must be born again. And Nicodemus understood clearly what he was saying because he said, you know, I, how can I do that? Can I enter into my mother's womb a second time and be born? In other words, he know what I mean, born again, you mean tell him I've got to start this thing all over again? In the spirit, you got to start this thing all over again. But if you're intellectually in down, you can't receive the Holy Spirit because your mind will block you. Your knowledge will block you. Uh, am I making sense? If you're used to being in control of your own self, your own language, I'm going to say this, I'm going to vote, the Holy Spirit will not have an avenue to be able to speak then. You remember last Shabbat I said a lot of times if we really truly look at this thing the way we've had people to receive the Holy Spirit over the years and I don't care in what area or whatever church or whatever assembly you've ever belonged to. Either we praised and worshiped so much it got you so tired that your mouth was still moving and you was no longer or you no longer had the ability to resist. And you just start saying anything, your mouth starts, you know, you get really tired and all of a sudden, bam, the Holy Spirit hits you. Next thing you know, you speak in tongues. The reason why we function that way and done things that way because it's kind of hard to teach us in this society what faith is. Because we think faith, and we know that faith is the way we equate in this society is something we can mentally put this to. But to think that I have to do something I have to do something. Well, think about this. You do have to speak in order to receive. But before I go farther, let's read on. Look at this. John 14, chapter verse 16. Read, brother, saying. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. He's going to give you a what? Another comforter. Are y'all hearing this? He's going to give you another comforter. Come on. That he may abide with you forever. Come on. Even the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. Whom the world cannot receive. 
Who cannot receive the spirit of truth? The world. The world cannot receive the spirit of truth. Read on. Because it seeth him not. Uh huh. Neither knoweth him. See, the world, even we got to the point now, even if we see it, we can't believe it. You ever see something happen right in front of you, you go, I don't believe it. Oh, I can't believe that just happened. See your speech. Y'all see that? Hmm? Read on. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Where's this comforter going to be at? In, with you and in you. Read on. I will not leave you comfortless. That is a promise. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. But then he goes on to define for us what this comforter is in the 26th verse. Read. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Who is the comforter? The Holy Ghost. Read. Whom the Father will send in my name. Who sends this? Jesus. The Father sends yes. this, and he sends it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Is that right? Read on. He shall teach you all things. This comforter is going to teach you all things. Read on. And bring all things to your remembrance. Ah. Keep reading. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Then he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, I give I unto you, and let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He gives you the peace. Y'all understand that? Y'all get this, right? So we know that the comforter is the what? Holy the Holy Ghost. Ghost. That's what it says, right? Now, earlier I talked about exercising faith a little bit. See, faith, according to the Hebrew, Hebrew is always equated with right action, not mental sin. You see what paralyzes Christianity today? Because they think everything has to be knowledge right here. But faith is always equated with right action. Let me give you an example over in Luke, the 11th chapter. No, I don't want to go to Luke 11. Let me go to Matthew 14 first. Matthew 14, all right? Starting at verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them... Walking on the sea. Jesus went to them at the fourth watch walking on the sea. And when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me to come unto thee on the water. Now the key is, and he said, come. He did not assure him. He did not assure Peter that it was him. Peter asked, Lord, if. It be thou, if it be you, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. One word. Again, Peter didn't get no assurance that that really was him. Are y'all getting this? Y'all don't miss this part, right? Huh? And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Y'all seeing what's taking place right here? Peter exercised right here faith. And that a faith was equated with action. He didn't know, but he did believe. And his belief caused him to step out on water. Hey, y'all seeing this? That's what it's. Can y'all believe that? It actually caused him to step out actually on the water. Now, let me tell you something. Walking and stepping is not faith. That's something you've already been familiar with. You, you do it every day. Uh-oh. Y'all hearing that? 
Isn't that what Peter just said? Hey, it ain't no big deal for him to, but to step out on the water. And that's another story. He had to believe. Speaking is something you do every day. But you have to be told when you get the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit speak through you. Isn't that right? But you're accustomed to speaking every day. Isn't that right? Something you do all the time. Look what he says. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. What keeps us from receiving the Holy Spirit? Yep. We, the wind for us is doubt. Unbelief. The wind. And they're pretty bosterous too because they paralyze us from doing what we know we need to do. Are y'all hearing that? I want y'all to get it because we're getting to something, saints. See, there's a lot of things that go on in the mind prior to receiving. Hey, man, the devil even talk. First thing he's trying to do is cast doubt. And he wants you to pay attention to that doubt so that you don't exercise faith. What you already familiar with doing? Are you familiar with talking? Sure he is. Sure you are. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? In other words, why, wait a minute. Yeah, you got all these elements. You got all these things going on out here and stuff. But the, the problem, Peter, is doubt. Are y'all hearing that out there? Huh? I'll read it again. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou do what? Doubt. You receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Oh, hallelujah. You've got to actually trust him. And you need so much trust. Now we're going to go to the part that I said was going to go to Luke the ninth, the eleventh chapter, and see what's going on here. You see what's what's going there are spiritual forces that are working to trying to keep you from receiving, and a lot of it comes from experiences we received in our life. But what you really have to do is trust the Father unconditionally. Now there are a lot of you people out there in these little small assemblies out there who I've spoken to this week who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit it's a joy hearing your voice too now what you've done is you've positioned yourself to where you can actually pray for the rest did y'all hear what I said you've already received the Holy Spirit now you're in a position to pray for the rest alright Look at this analogy right here, okay? Because, you know, a lot of times people are fearful that they're going to receive something other than the Holy Spirit. I mean, after all, suppose you've been to an assembly where speaking in tongues is, the, is of the devil. That's what they taught you. Do you know the kind of roadblocks you're going to have up in front of you? If you have been to places and they have taught you that speaking in tongues is of the devil, boy, I tell you, you really got a lot of devils to get past now. You got some bad teaching and bad indoctrination that you got to get past. So watch this. That means there are barriers and walls that must be removed. So make sure that you repent it up. Make sure you, you are truly a saint of the most high, y'all. And make sure you're removed and repent of all occult practices out of your heart and life. And that you're not holding any grudges against anyone. Then you position yourself to receive the Holy Spirit. All right? Look what he says right here. So don't ever be afraid of receiving the Holy Spirit, especially if you're asking the Father for the Holy Spirit. Here's the proof of it. I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Do what? Ask, and it shall be given to you. Do what now? Ask. Huh? Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth 
That's a good promise, isn't it? You may tell if I ask, I'll receive. You sure will. But we've seen earlier that what caused Peter to sink was what? Doubt. Not because the wind was busted. That's supposed to happen. Huh? The devil is a spirit. That's wind that is bosters. It's, it's, it's doing everything it can to get you to focus on him rather than having faith in y'all. Think about that. Come on, saints. Jesus didn't rebuke him or didn't correct him because he kept his eyes on the external things that were going on. He, was, he, he let him know what his problem was for sinking. It was doubt. Saints of the Most High, Yah, your barrier and your roadblock to receiving the Holy Spirit is doubt. Old fashioned doubt. Y'all hearing that? Look what he says right here. For everyone that asketh receive it, and he that seeketh findeth it, to him that knocketh it shall be open. Then he goes on to say, If a son, we back again. As bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? I don't know one father that will give his son a, a, a stone. Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? So you don't have to be afraid of receiving another spirit when you ask Yah for the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is trust and believe. No doubt. It may take you a day or two. It may take you from this point till Shabbat to build up enough confidence and faith in him. But you must overcome doubt. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? So if a son asks a father of any of these things, will he? Is he not your father? So you can trust and believe because of the eternal order of things. That when you ask him for the ruah, you ask him for the spirit that is holy, you don't have to worry about ever receiving another spirit. For some way, somehow, he has done blocked the order of Satan to make sure that you don't receive another spirit. He says this, if ye then be an evil, he already know your condition. You're wicked as hell. So ain't no need in worrying about are you too good or not. No, you ain't good. You are wicked as hell. He's not going to puff you up and make you think something that you're not. Well, I ain't no good. You are right. You ain't no good. That's why he said, if ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Here you are even giving good gifts to your children. Oh, now the father's not evil. Hallelujah. But if you can give your children gift, he says you ask the Holy Spirit, he'll give you that Holy Spirit. Is it is this not beautiful? I'm gonna show you how simple the Bible is. Sometimes we do stuff traditionally because of comfort. You understand what I mean? I'm gonna read y'all. So let's go to Acts chapter two, okay? See, the idea when people are receiving the Holy Spirit, first of all, number one, it ain't nothing to be ashamed of. And you want to have a good environment. Are y'all listening? Huh? Watch this one. Acts 2, 2, and there suddenly came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Notice, this was a sound. And it was as a rushing mighty wind. You hear that? Look at this. I'm going to show you how we miss just finer nuances. And it filled all the house where they were what? So when they received the Holy Spirit, they were sitting down. They were sitting down. (laughs) 
Sometimes we, we stand them up. And that ain't saying there's nothing wrong with it because I've seen a whole bunch of people see the Holy Spirit standing up. I've seen them receive it kneeling. But these people were sitting. It does say sitting, right? S I T T I N G. Sitting. That would encourage some people, wouldn't it? Yes. You sit them down and then, well, I don't know. You know, picture comes to mind, okay? Suppose like you had all these successive roles in here. You said all the people who want the Holy Spirit in the first row. And then you sent the people who have the Holy Spirit behind them in the second row. And then the people who don't have the Holy Spirit in the third row. And then the people that do have the Holy Spirit in the fourth row. And then you just tell the people who have the Holy Spirit now start praying and worshiping the Father. And then these people that are sitting down in front of them, all right, now you start praying and worshiping the Father. Hallelujah. Chances are they'll hear you. Wonder what in the world's going on. Now, a rigid man, you tell them, say, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You tell them, say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother. Relax. We're not interrogating you. And God is not about to practice ventriloquism. <laughs> Y'all understand this? This is free will. This is trusting in him to give you the utterance, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Could be a little bit more like, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I received the Holy Spirit, I was saying, thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah. What do you mean? I, I, then I started saying hallelujah. What happened was, because I was so rigid, I had to say hallelujah so fast until my words no longer formed natural man's words. And then next thing you know, something started taking place inside of me. Then the Spirit gave me the utterance as I was yielded to him. Well, I'm trying to save you a lot of steps. You don't have to get down there and labor like you're on the chain gang. All you have to do is trust and believe. Yah is a spirit. You trust and believe. When you was a child, you didn't know one word you were saying. And then King tells us, unless you become as a little child, you can't even be great in the kingdom. And to be born again, you have to become as a child. And this is not a one-time thing, too, because your tongues will progress as you get older, but you still need to stay in practice, allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. Yeah. It's really not that hard at all. It's all about humbling yourself. Y'all seeing how easy this is? It's pretty easy, isn't it? So you must, you must exercise faith. And you got faith to walk. You should have faith. You got faith to speak. Peter had faith, enough faith to walk and jump out on the water. You need to have the same faith to jump out on the water spiritually and allow the, allow the Holy Spirit to give you the utterance. Just like he said he would. Because you know how it is. We like to be in control. And boy, don't worry about it. When, once he get a hold of it, you'll know. But he is only going to come into a willing vessel. He's only going to come into a vessel that is yielded to him. Because remember, the Bible says, and they all spake with tongues. And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Who gave them utterance? The but you know what? If they were, the Bible clearly says in the first verse, and on the day of Pentecost, uh, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one court in one place, and there suddenly came a sound from heaven. Now I promise you, they were just not just sitting down, waiting. For Yah to overcome them. 
You know, most people say, well, I'll receive the Holy Spirit when he give it to me. You're going to be waiting a long time. Because the Holy Spirit is, is, a, is, is something, again, received. Here's a, here's a $20 bill. All right? Now, Tyler, I want my $20 bill back. <laughs> okay? Now, I can say, here, Tyler, here's $20. You see how easy that was? <laughs> you see how easy that was? But, but you, see what I'm, you, you see what's going on, though. There's more than meet the eye. I mean, the Father has made the Holy Spirit available ever since the day of Pentecost, and he said, here he is. And all you have to do is receive him. Amen. See, I, I made the $20 bill available to him. Tyler, here's the $20. Now, if he don't ever take that $20, that doesn't mean the $20 is not available. But as soon as he reaches out and take that twenty dollars, he has received that twenty dollars. Are y'all listening? He has received that twenty dollars, and you'll find out if 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 y'all's real or not real quick. There won't be no more doubts if he's real or not. Hallelujah! Now this twenty dollars is a Federal Reserve note. It ain't the Holy Spirit. That's just an example. <laughs> But y'all see the analogy, right? He has made the Holy Spirit available to us ever since the day of Pentecost. And all he's doing is asking people to receive him. Remind you, if people don't receive him, then you're rejecting him. I mean, would that not look stupid today if you turn around here, you are, you got the best, you got the best gift in the world. And it's available to somebody. And all they need to do is just take it. And it's held out all the way like this all these many years, and they never receive it. What benefit would it be to you if it's available and you never receive it? But now, since those of us who have been filled with the Holy Spirit, we know how much of a benefit it is. We can't even imagine living without him. Isn't that true? Can't imagine living without the Holy Spirit now. That's the same thing with this $20 bill right here. It's sitting out there. It ain't going to do you no good until you read. In other words, Yah, by his Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said that the Father will send the Comforter in my name. You can call on Jesus and receive his name. You can just sit there and say, Jesus. Jesus. You're going to find out if it's a devil or not. But I already know what the book says. Hallelujah. When you yield yourself to him and your heart is already submitted to him and stuff, believe me, he'll know the condition of your heart. That's why I call this preparing you to receive the Holy Spirit because sometimes some of us, I mean, it took me a couple of days to prepare myself. I didn't even know I was getting ready for the Holy Spirit. But that's what I was doing when I was reading my Bible. I was reading my Bible, reading every scripture I could find on the Holy Spirit. Didn't even realize it. Reading it on Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit. And it's really not hard. All you have to do is receive him. Then when you receive him, the evidence is, is that he will be that well of living water springing up out of you. The spirit will give you utterance. You be like an, a gusher. Hallelujah. And you ain't going to have to worry about asking somebody if you received it or not. You're going to know. No, no, I mean, you really, truly going to know. And you ain't going to fake this because all the people that are around, they'll know if you got it or not. Because the ones who have received the Holy Spirit, they know the genuine Holy Spirit when they hear it. That's why everybody always sitting around. When somebody receives the Holy Spirit, they're looking for a certain sound. You come up with some some bull jive junk, we're gonna know, okay, you must that must be that occultism you was practicing years ago. Devil and showed up. That's why we try to prepare your heart to tell you that you need to make sure that you anything you've dwelled in, especially a witchcraft, you gotta clean all that out of you. You gotta clean all bitterness and everything out of you. You gotta get all that out of you. Huh? And then and then you need to make sure, make sure that he is your Messiah. Make sure of that. Spend some time with the Father. 
Spend some time meditating on him. Prepare yourself to receive. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself to receive. Seems like the Father, if you notice, we've done more teaching on the Holy Spirit this year than I have in all the years. Man, I would preach on him once or twice, you know, almost every year, but I've done a whole lot this year. And the reason being is because we get all these people that's coming from these churches, ain't nobody filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm sitting up there thinking, what do you mean? What in the world? Now, the devil don't want you to feel the Holy Spirit because, hey, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're no threat to his kingdom. That's why he said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. See, that's when you receive power. Yeah. And you'll be equipped with power to do something, and the devil don't want you to have that power. But the most high, y'all want you to have it. Because he wants you to tear up his kingdom. Yeah. What I'm teaching you, your religions that you come from is not going to teach you this. <laughs> Your religions in this world, especially up here in Lafayette, Tennessee, they don't none of them teach this hardly up here. There may be one or two places up here, but they don't. But then they fall short because they don't teach the commandments. You know what I mean? They don't teach command, and there ain't many of them to even teach you much of that. Especially the Holy Spirit, because they make you think that okay, well, you, you, you it's it's an option. Well, Christ didn't make it an option. Every time we turn around and read, whether it be Acts 2, Acts 8, Acts 10, Acts, 9, Acts um, 19, um, 1 Corinthians 12, 14 makes no difference. Every time we read, we see that everyone in the renewed covenant that was a follower of Christ, they received the Holy Spirit. And what you'll have is you'll have a lot of people taking stuff out of context to try to appease the minds of the people to make them think they don't need it. No, I'm telling you, you need it because you need to be equipped for the things that are coming down the pike in these years to come. You need to prepare yourself right now so you can endure the hardness that's coming. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit. And not only that, we need the Holy Spirit so we can be strong in mind and do some exploits. Because right now our strength is very small. I mean, these people were disappearing. These people were baptizing folks and they was in the next city. What do we Huh? I mean, come on. These people have some power. These people was in prison and chains falling off of them. Earthquakes taking place. What do we? Hmm? Sorry, folks. I don't, I'm just going to keep on pushing. I told you, I'm just not satisfied. I know that there's so much more available to us. But I also know what's keeping it. The lack of hunger. Blessed are those which hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they, who's are they? The ones that are hungry, shall be filled. All this feeling, huh? Whole bunch of feeling here, isn't it? So let's position ourselves. Even if you have the Holy Spirit, you need to position yourself to even get closer to him. We all do. I don't think we can ever be too close to the Father. Hallelujah. So that means we all got to revert back to childlike, say, hey, man, I like to just run and jump up in the Father's arms and just stay there. Hallelujah. Say, don't put me down. So it's about humility, men. Hallelujah. So all you people out there that have received the Holy Spirit, you just position yourself just to pray and ask the, the Father. Just pray. Encourage the hearts of the people that are there. They'll receive it. Hallelujah. The people will receive it. I suggest that from this time until Shabbat comes that you maybe start preparing your heart to receive the message so that you can. And, and make your worship more sincere. More personal. You know, rather than just going through that regular American sick culture. You understand what I mean? How about learning how to be intimate with the Father? Because, you know, when the Holy Spirit, when he's welcome in a place, he'll, he'll come on in. He's already in the people. But, boy, the Bible says that Yahweh inhabits the praises of his saints. 
Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a worship service in here one day and all of a sudden we experienced that sound as a rushing mighty wind? But I do know that the, the, the place has to be right, meaning the people. Uh oh, yeah, they have to be in the right frame of mind. Let me give you an analogy. If I'm not mistaken, I, I, my, my memory may be off a little bit. How many people saw Christ after this resurrection? About 500? How many? 500. 500 people. And then, how many made it to the, yeah, 500 people. How many made it to the upper room? 120. Y'all see that attrition rate? That sounded like jump school. It did sound like jump school. We had like eight or 900 people in that jump school class. Something like that, man. Only maybe 300 of us graduated. Somewhere along in there, if that many. Now you think about that. 500 people after his death impalement after his impalement his death and his resurrection crucifixion death and resurrection they saw him and only 120 made it to an upper room out of 500 people do you think the spirit of unbelief how about this what's all that's in the world Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You, you probably think the devil could be, you know, those, those are probably things that probably could have choked out 380 people. Y'all getting that? Could, could choked out 380. Some, whatever it was, no matter what it was, something got a hold of those 380 to not make them believe. That is something. When you think about 500 and only a 120 made it to the upper room, that is something. That is something. You can take the numbers either way, but, but the, the truth is there were a whole lot more that did not believe than were believed. And so as it is today, there's a whole lot more that do not believe than believe. Look at today. Look how many people refuse to even teach people the necessity of receiving the Holy Spirit. And you got all this scriptural proof right here. You got pastors today who used to once teach it, don't even teach it no more. I think they're doing the people a great injustice. You probably saying... If I saw Jesus after his resurrection like that, wouldn't nothing kept me from the upper room. Wouldn't nothing kept me from obeying him. If you saw him go up in those clouds, you'd have been gazing like them other people, wouldn't you? Angels come down, why stand ye here gazing? <laughs> this same Jesus whom you see go up is going to come again in like manner as you have seen him go. And still look at the angels. Angels, now go to Jerusalem. <laughs> huh? Some of us lost to the eye. Oh, yeah. Watch this one. I got to work. Got bills to pay. What's more important than obeying? Um, I, I got to go see grandma. I ain't seen grandma in many years. We got a birthday that day. You think of something, and people come up with all kinds of excuses from, for disobedience. Yeah. Oh, I, well, I got to go see him. That's club night. Whatever it is, whatever it was back then, it caused them to not, even after seeing him after his resurrection, it caused them not to believe him. But there were some people that were very serious about this. That's who we are, Israel. We're the chosen few. We're the ones that are very serious about this. And we are the ones that's going to make it in. And the rest of the people are going to be without. And there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Not because they reject him, 
but because they refuse to believe. See, hell was made for the Satan and his angels. But since man has chose to follow Satan and his lawless ways and disobedience, it had to get bigger, according to the prophet. And so now all the people that were that it, hell wasn't created for, you got to go and serve the one you serve while you're on earth. And if you serve sin, you serve Satan. You serve obedience, you're a servant of Yahweh. It's just clear cut. So we hope that you spend some time preparing yourself because the most high Yahweh would love to confirm in you that you are 100% completely his. And he gives you this witness by the Holy Spirit. See, he couldn't come into you if you hadn't went through repentance and cleansed yourself because he can't come and dwell in an unclean temple. Yeah, you his, but he wants you to have some power. Hallelujah. He wants you to go on and be effective for him. Hallelujah. He wants you to be able to, after you've been converted, to go strengthen your brother. Glory to the king. And don't sit up there and, and make a doctrine out of it. I just read what was written. The pastor now says, in order for us to receive the Holy Ghost, we got to be sitting. I'll tell you what, I received the Holy Ghost. I was kneeling, and by the time I got finished, I was standing. I probably was sitting in between it, and I was everywhere. <laughs> and don't worry about it. Don't compare. Never make the mistake of trying to compare your experience with someone else's. The Holy Spirit knows your heart, so he knows what level or what measure you need. Hallelujah. Somebody like me, I was just an arrogant, prideful, hard head dummy. So he had to smack me pretty hard. He had to make it so unmistakable hmm, that, that nobody could miss it. Hallelujah. Hey, I'll even tell you this. Brother John Reed, I hope you're listening. Put the beer down and listen. Even after I received the Holy Spirit, it wasn't even five minutes later that I, I turned around and doubted what I received. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Try that one on. And it wasn't until after I went back home and confirmed that's what happened. So, if Yah can endure this knucklehead right here, after receiving, then turn around and doubt, and then still be filled with it, then what can he do with all you? Hmm? You ain't met too many preachers as transparent like me. Most of them get up at, when I received the Holy Ghost, it was the grandest thing of all. Everybody was there. And when I got it, everybody wanted it. Because of me. And I. And I. And I. And I. And I. And I. <laughs> Ugh. See how people, men, would make it sick, don't it? All that I junk. I'm just truthful. We all deal with same light passion, same light. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you ain't got to ask the Father if you're pleasing to him or not. You already know. Because the Holy Spirit is already telling you what you're falling short of. You're just ignoring his voice. Oh, hallelujah. Don't play dumb on me, saints. I'm in this thing too now. Most people would, would rather for me not be so transparent. They'd rather for me just be quiet. Shh, shh. Don't tell everything, Pastor Dow. You're going to tell on me. That's the whole idea. The people who are not keen and discerning so they can see you for who you are. <laughs> Glory to the king. But the Holy Spirit, he's here. He's, he's been here for a long time. He had to be because as long as Messiah was walking here on the face of planet earth, he couldn't make, be made available to all of us. But after he went up to the Father and he promised, he's made, he made, he said the promise, now he's available and he's still here. All you need to do is receive him. That's all you need to do. Hallelujah. If you will receive a hundred dollar bill and somebody stick it out there in front of you, receive, receive ye. Receive ye. Receive ye. 
Receive ye. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the words of truth. Pray this and sing deed down our hearts in the mighty name of Yahshua. Amen. Y'all have a blessed evening. Shalom. King coming.